Welcome back to another episode of Pine Pint Podcast. Marvin, Marvin, God, get your name right. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming on to the podcast. You've had such an amazing career and a very loyal one. There's not many who's had a career like yourself. So if it's all right, can you just talk us through about how you got into sort of playing football and then making your professional, well, signing your professional contract at age 18? Yeah, so um, I played for a Sunday league team called Bear But Rangers at the time. And I had, I mean, for getting into the game relatively terms wise I thought I mean I was late I mean because normally I mean you by the age of probably about 10 11 back in the, those days I mean most most kids would were, were heard about and knew about within their town I grew up in a town called Ellsbury and um normally kids were already at certain clubs so I mean it wasn't until we're under 14 age my Sunday league team played against an Luton team and from that two of us got picked out to come across and train with Luton regarding like to then to have a look at us sort of thing. And um, I, I trained like for probably about a year just traveling over on a Wednesday evening um, and then playing in the Southeast counties, what it was back then on a Saturday. And then um, probably it wasn't until six months probably before I left school that I got told that I was going to get taken on as a, an apprentice back then. So like I said, I mean, normally, I mean, there was, there was, there was probably about seven or eight of us who got took on that year, but there was probably four or five of them who were already within the system. If you know, as a schoolboy yeah. came through the ranks, and so therefore they had already been told that they were going to get um, an apprentice. Whereas I was, like I said, came in relatively late, and so I didn't get told until probably about six months before um, I actually joined the club uh, right straight from school. Is that something that you always wanted to do then, be, become a footballer, or did you ever have any different aspirations? No, I mean, it, it's, it's weird. It's, it's, it, that, that's all I really focused on. Um, growing up as a kid, I, I wrote off to, again, so many clubs back in the day. I mean, it doesn't matter. If, I mean, I lived in, like I said, in Ellsbury, and I was writing to clubs like Manchester United, um, Aston Villa, um, Arsenal, Tottenham. And um, it's funny enough, I still think that my mum and my parents have got the, the letters. And it's, oh, thanks. But, yeah. I mean... Yeah. You live a little bit too far away, sort of thing, and so that was always on my on, on my on my mind that I wanted to try and get involved into the game of prof- become a professional footballer. Yeah, Amazing. yeah, and then um, obviously you did you did make it at uh, at Luton Town, made your first team debut uh, against a, a very good at the time Wimbledon team. Um, what what was that occasion like? I mean, it was again. I was very like happy to, to make my debut but the funny thing was I, I think I'm trying to remember now because it's a long time guys um, <laughs> that at the time Mal Donerkey and Steve Foster were the, the, um, the, the central pairing and Mal had an injury a toe injury of some sort and they were injecting it and so I n- probably knew that at some point in the coming weeks that I might actually get to make my debut because they were like injecting him and then I was sub for the first time at Highbury against Arsenal, we played at Arsenal, and that was back in the day when you only had two subs. And so, yeah. um, it I knew when obviously I was made a sub, then it was a, again that Mal, Mal was probably struggling and that I might have to come on. And that was probably the most nerve wracking um, time I've ever experienced in my entire life. I mean, it's just, I mean, to be at Highbury and, um, my, I mean, when you're told to get warmed up, go and get warmed up, go and get warmed up. Okay, my heart was like, boom, 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 boom. I'm thinking and shh myself if I had to come on and stuff so literally I mean got through the whole like game 90 minutes and Mal obviously went down a couple of times but didn't I didn't get on but like it got to the end of the game and the final whistle goes and it's you know what I'm thinking I'm gutted now I didn't get on sort of thing whereas at the first my initial thought was like oh Mal's down get warmed up Marv get warmed up so I mean it, then probably about two weeks later um, Mal was just like struggling and so Ray Hartford at the time said to me, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna play um, at Wimbledon, Plough Lane against the Mighty Dons, and um, yeah, that was it. Sort of thing, a bit of a a baptism of fire, so to speak, playing against John Fashnu in your in your first like game league debut sort of thing. And um, funny enough, I gave away the first goal. I get literally. I mean, I was, I mean, a confident player, and I felt." 
in the situation what I was given, like the ball got played to me and, and I felt that I had more time than I did. But I, I mean, again, playing in my first game and the level was like totally different to what you're used to. Mm-hmm. They've closed me down really quickly. Me being me, like try to take someone on dribble sort of thing. They all got like intercepted. They've gone straight through and scored. That's probably within the first six minutes, literally in the first six minutes that's happened. And, um, but again, I mean, I didn't dwell on, I didn't dwell on things sort of thing. I just thought, okay. And, and to be honest, Steve Fotu, who I was playing with along the side at the time, didn't obviously come for me. I mean, I knew I was, I made a mistake. I mean, they probably knew I made a mistake. I just wanted me to get on with the game sort of thing. But it was, um, we ended up losing, I think, 2-0 in the end, but Bashnu was just constantly, constantly talking for that the whole game. So it was like Vinnie Jones, like, and like, just from goal kicks, it would be a case like Bashnu would be going, put it on young blood's head, put it on young blood's head, go on, just put it on his head, go on. And, like, and I'm just like thinking, like, didn't say nothing. I just thought, you know what, I'll just get on the game, stay focused, and um at the end of the game, he'd come up to me and said to me, look, do you know what? He goes, because I, I mean, they knew obviously my debut as well. He said, look, well done, well played. He goes, I mean, even after the mistake, um, for you not to say anything or react to anything I've been saying, he goes, you've done well. He said, well done. So, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Was he throwing his elbow about as well then, Marvin? Or? Um, no, he wasn't, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, again, no, he wasn't too bad. I mean, it, it, again, he was jumping, I suppose. Like, I mean, I'm one of those, ones. I'm old school. Like, I mean... I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. If you do get caught, I'm saying it's probably an accident. I mean, nine hundred yeah. ten. But yeah. I mean, no, he he wasn't. But I mean, like I said, Finney was giving it large in midfield and chatting around and, and speaking. I can't think who was. I think it was Peter Nicholas who was playing in the midfield at the time and stuff like that. But yeah, it was it was just the the, no, the normal crazy gang as it is as they are. Yeah, he's such a mad mad character, isn't he, John Fashioner? How how well spoken he is as a person, like very gentle, and then on a pitch, he just loses his head, doesn't he? He's just like, Oh, he's at someone, it's brilliant, yeah, it, it, it's, it's true. But I mean, but I mean b- b- different players have different game, as I call it, game faces, sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I've, I mean, I've played with a, um, many and many of players who literally off the field, nice as pie. Once yeah. they cross the white line, I mean, they'd tackle their granny. Do you know what I mean? They'd go for a brick. <laughs> I mean, there's this literally, there's, there's no, there's no bars. Like they literally would tackle their granny. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Speaking of some of them players, uh, Marvin, we we're just going to mention, obviously your first few years, you played in the Premier League or was it first division? I don't know. If it was first division, yeah. First division back then. Yeah. yeah. On that time when it was just changing over, obviously, but some of the characters you're playing with talking probably about some of them there, Ian Dowie, uh, Lars Elstrup, Kingsley Black. What what were these guys like for you as a I mean, I don't know how old Ian Dowie would have been then. It, it looks like he's been 58 since <laughs> 19, 1980 anyway. So just what was it, it like coming into the dressing with them? It's, um, I mean, Downer, as we called, as, as we called him back, back then, he, um, he, he, came, he would come from non league I think it was Hendon. And so he was like... So sort of like Gaelic came into the game quite late again, relatively late because from non-league. But he was very determined, very raw, um, but like aggressive, which, yeah. and but like very intelligent. I mean, I mean, I call it. I mean, like a bookworm. You know, these sort of people who like very highly educated and and like to let people know that they're highly educated as well. Down, I was, was a bit in that way and trying to baffle you with some bamboozle, some fancy <laughs> word. I said, Downer, listen, why don't you go to the toilet, right? What comes out of your backside is the same as the colour of my backside, right? So don't start coming with that bullshit, right, about whatever you're talking about, right? Speak in my terms, right? Normal terms, none of these fancy words. So yeah. anyway, he was a, he was a good lad. I used to room with him, actually, to be fair. Yeah. I used to room with him. And um, Kingsley was so quiet. Kingsley Black, really, really quiet. He was a year older than me mm. and in the youth team. And so but, so we did actually play with each other in the, in, the, in the youth cups and stuff. But so, so quiet. Really, really quiet, but a really, really like genuine guy sort of thing. Amazing. Um, so yeah, after after Luke and like Luke said, had um, they were set in the top division 10, six, six, eight, 10 consecutive seasons, I think it was. Um, and then bad, isn't relegation that? relegation came. Um, relegated by two points off Coventry, sitting a place above. What what do you think went wrong wrong that season? Was it? I mean, funny enough, Josh. I mean. 
for, for me, the actual times when we got relegated, and I'm this, this is this is not me passing the buck now because some of yeah, the times yeah. when we stayed up, I mean, I was never involved. I was never yeah. involved in the actual game where it was a case where like, oh, this we need this we yeah, need yeah. this game to win. Do you know what I mean? So it, yeah. I was either like injured, which most of the like fans would have said, oh, typical, but like I mean, in the day, but um, I was never actually involved, but I was always in and around it, and Ooh. I mean, the one. Time, I mean, that time, what you're talking about now, the co- I, can't, I, I can't for the life of me remember it. Yeah. I really can't. I mean, my mind's very, very blank. The one I can remember, which was on the last day when we had to go to Derby and we had to win um, win that game. And, and I remember going up and our waveform was very, very poor. And mm. um, I was in the, um, watching, watching the game and I think Kingsley scored two and... Um, that was the only one really I can really remember on yeah. the last day of surviving. Yeah. But then again, I mean, I mean, I'm not sure if it was that time. Another time we stayed up and Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. I think was it Sheffield Wednesday went down. Or was it Sheffield Wednesday or some or Barnsley? I'm not sure it was now. But I think it was Sheffield Wednesday, and we we st- like we stayed up on goal difference or something like that, and we went out to um, Marbella. And they were out in Marbella as it as it happens oh, no. as well. Wednesday. Is that the same in in the bar and all that? And it was a case of what well, they looked. They were looking over us and thinking, "That's Luton Town, isn't it?" And then we're looking oh, at them thinking, "That's Sheffield Wednesday, isn't it?" Same thing. <laughs> and after being again, it felt a little bit awkward to start off with. Yeah. But once you started having a few drinks, I mean, you know what lads are like. Like, yeah. like I mean, it was just like all like, you know what, it is what it is. And we had a great crack with them, to be fair. Yeah. I bet that were a better holiday for you, though, to, to go and enjoy <laughs> surviving than, uh, than those. It guys. was. It was, most definitely. <laughs> so a few years then in, in the second division, but what we see nowadays is teams like Norwich and whatnot who are bouncing between the two divisions. What do you feel stopped Luton doing that and sort of being sort of a surviving team again in that second division? I mean, I, I think that where they are now, they're... At a better place where behind the scenes everything being organized by the board and everyone is is much more structured and much more like an understanding that this is the this is the wage budget we got i just felt that probably back then you know different teams were trying to compete with different clubs and were throwing money at players and then obviously you get relegated and next thing you know you owe a certain amount of like throwing on fees and these wages to these players and they just couldn't cope and just couldn't cope and so th- I think it needed someone to come in which like the 2020 did and they sort of like said look this is what we're going to do this is going to be our budget even up to this, to this day now in the championship I mean I think Luton are one of the the lowest like budgets in the entire league, yeah. but it's the it's the way they are. It's the principle. Um, they're surviving and they're doing quite well now with um, Nathan Jones in their in his second spell. And I feel that anyone coming into the club now knows that look, this is this is the culture of the club. This is where they are. You're not going to come to Luton now and be earning like big mega bucks and and be it like a a stepping stone for another club. Yeah. Yes, if you come in and be one of the guys and one of the lads and you know and you work hard and you do well, we might be successful as a group and then you might get rewarded individually by someone coming in for you. So I think where the club is now, it's much, much, much a better structure. Yeah. Seems to be doing well, doesn't he, Nathan Jones? Seems to be one of those guys who, who seems to fit there. Because he had a tough time at Stoke, didn't he? When he left, went to Stoke. Didn't work out for him there. But I think you see it, don't you? Sometimes a manager just fits a club perfectly and... He's gone back, and it's nice to see that he's he's doing a good yeah. job again. Jones didn't really see the Jones because he he was, I mean he was there when I mean when I was there he come he come as a come as a as a kid so yeah. he joined and I think it was David Pleat who signed him but he never actually um, managed to get in, into the first team and um, left or went I think he went to Spain or somewhere like that but um, real real like bubbly good lad um, like to laugh and the joke sort of thing and so I mean I still keep in touch with him now. Yeah. And when I go back every now and then, I'll, I'll go and watch a game and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I mean, the Stoke thing. I mean, for me, it was a case where a lot of a lot of Luton like supporters gave him a lot of stick and yeah. a lot of flack. But again, I mean, I, I'm quite. I mean, 
realistic. And I, I said, look, if anyone ever asked me the question, I said, look, if someone from like your industry came in and said to you, look, they want to give you an opportunity or a promotion and, and I'm supposing it's going to be a lot more money, you're not going to turn it down. No yeah. one in any walk of life are going to turn it down. Yeah. Yes, he could have maybe handled it a bit better the way he did. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, I didn't begrudge him or didn't, I wasn't upset with him in, in where or why he went. Because, yeah. I mean, that's just like a fact of life. I mean, he wanted to be better. He wanted to better himself. And so he wanted to try it. It didn't work out. He's come back now. And again, it's hopefully it's going to work out and um, he's going to stay with Loon for a while now. Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. I think whoever would have gone to Stoke at that time as well would have struggled. It, it just yeah. seemed a poison chalice that, come out of the Premier League, spent loads of money, had a couple of managers, and it, it was probably a polar opposite to Luton. Uh, in oh, the, you've said, you're dealing with, I don't want to cast aspersions, yeah. but, you know, big personalities, big, people on big money, Tom Inns, et cetera, probably on 30, 40K, different yeah. kettle of fish to, yeah. no disrespect to Luton, players he's brought up through the lower leagues that have that believe in him, and, and as you've said, won't be earning huge, huge amounts, and I'll have that, already have that respect for him, so, Probably taught him a lot as well, I guess, that the grass isn't always greener, um, I suppose. And, you know, I bet I bet he probably doesn't regret it because you've got to try to better yourself financially. But I think uh, I don't think he'll have any worries, I guess, about his loyalty to Luton going forwards, I would imagine. No, yeah. no, no. So now then in the third division and a runner straight, eight straight wins and two draws in 11 games, a fantastic season finishing in the top six at the time. And then Luke's least favourite player, Tony Thorpe there, who, uh, what he says, always scores against Burnley. Did you feel like you had enough that season to get back into that second division? Yeah, well, I mean, we and again, we, we played really, really well that season. And it was um, a case of, like, I mean, like, Paul Pearing, Paul Pearing is, is a natural like goal scorer, but on top of that, he's got great ability, great feet, really good, like tricky. And I mean, even when I used to play against him, like in training, I used to just try and boot him, boot him, and like just, just like, <laughs> all the time because I he used to go, "What are you doing? What are you doing?" I went, "Listen, I, when he's when he when you're moaning for me about me doing what I'm doing to you, you're not focusing on the game." So at the end of the day, if those players who play against you in on a Saturday are that smart. That's what I would be doing to you. And funny enough, it, when we when he went to Bristol City, um, I had obviously with Luton played Bristol City, and he and I knew I was playing against him. But to be honest, I, I, I never had a. I mean, it, as, a, for someone of his ability, who I felt was a really good player, I never had a difficult game. Maybe because obviously we knew each other yeah. quite well, and I knew how to get on top of him. Maybe because I was just like never give him an inch. He's just like kicking him or, or just pinch him. And he'd be like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Marv? What are you doing? I went, I don't know you. Who's, who's Marv? What are you doing, Marv? What are you marving me for? What? Do I know you? Sort of thing. And then after the game, he'd be like, what are you doing? I went, all right, Paul P. What's that? What are you doing? What are you doing? I went, listen, you've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? Listen. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, it was funny. <laughs> Yeah, so again, going back to your question, yeah, I've, 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 I mean, we should have done, no, we should have done better. I mean, with what the team, what we had, to be honest. I mean, was oh, I think we were talking about just before this as well, before he came on, that was, um, I think that if I'm right in thinking around that era, you just signed Steve Davis off, was he? He was a top defender at that level as well. What was it, what was he like to play play alongside? I mean, Steve, um, the bear, as we called him, I mean, like like a big bear. He was he was like. Unbelievable, and like, like I said, I mean, I remember Steve growing up um, in the youth days when he's at Southampton. Yeah. So um, he, 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 he came to us from Burnley, and then went back to Burnley, didn't he? All yeah. right, and I was just like, wow. I mean, when he first arrived, how we got a player of his caliber that he was so strong in the air, comfortable on the ball, like, and I, I used to love like dribbling and coming out of the ball, but once it was like like Steve and I had in the bag, I, it was a case where I didn't do it as much because he was so much more better and yeah. comfortable on the ball than I was, technically probably. And he had a great shot. He used to score like so many goals um, for us. And like, I, I mean, I, I, he's probably like one of the best. Yeah, I probably would have him in my all-time 11 mm. easily. Yeah, as, 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 as um, the players that Luton I've played with. 
he's that he's that good a player. And like I said, we got on well today, and then we still speak to today. But he was a great signing for the club. I mean, I, I, back at, in the time at the time in the day, it was a lot of money. I think it was something like eight hundred thousand. Yeah. Um, at, we paid. at the time, it was Burnley's really? record sale, and then it was our record buy when we bought him back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's mad, isn't it? But like I said, I mean, a top top signing and a great lad and a great player who um, I, I think. If he, you know, he'd be honest. He said he had a great time here at Luton yeah. um, at the time when he was when he signed. Right now, one game I wanted to talk to you about, Marv, and I know yeah. you'll remember this one. Uh, trailing it, switch two one from the first leg, turn it around, you three one up um, after extra time, but then an own goal, I think it was to to put it to to three two, and it switch going through on on away goals. Then there's a corner, Richard Wright mm. flaps at it, lands right on your head, and. Yeah, five four on aggregate, four two on the night. Then we did not yeah. scored the winner. What what was that like? It looked mad when I watched it on YouTube earlier. <laughs> it was right, Josh. It was absolute crazy. The whole the whole the whole game was probably, I mean, the most ups and downs you could have in in a cup game ever. I mean, yeah. and, I mean, again, back in the, I mean, it was two legged. You know, we were two one down, like you said, from the from the first leg. They um they go. And come and score. I think um, yeah. Johnson scores and goes three one up, and you know it's looking a little bit like onimus for us now. And then we get a goal back three two, and then um, we get another goal three three, and then wish I think yeah we're 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 goal down now, and they've scored. So they've scored again, and Steve Davis scores a header, a great header from a corner, right? And and, and now we're we're sort of like going through, and then he scores an own goal. <laughs> And literally, it's a case of oh my gosh! It's yeah. like it's gone back into their favour. And yeah. like you said, the la- it's the last. It's literally extra time, mm-hmm. the last minute, last kick of the game. Like I mean, Richard Wright, who's almost obviously within involved with England at the time and stuff, and he sort of like comes and he's he's completely stretching and he and, yeah. and he tries to catch it instead of maybe punching it. I mean, maybe I mean he's really lit it in his head, but. Yeah. It, literally came and like as he flapped it it's i could just see the ball coming like onto my head and i just thought look just get it on target and and, and we'll see what happens and it's just looped into the corner sort of thing and like you said it was like it was mad i mean because we you know we, we thought we were going out and then now we're we're, we're still like going through sort of thing but yeah you like a slow motion movie when i watched it earlier i imagine it felt like that at the time so i just <laughs> looped it in and <laughs> yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's funny because lenny lawrence is um the manager um, just said, um, he goes, he talked about it afterwards and after the game, and I can remember the, the talk, like, you know, everyone's happy in the dressing room and stuff. And he just goes, um, look, he goes, you would, you mean you could never like write that. He said, I mean, we goes, we deserved it on the night. He felt we deserved that we were the better team. But he goes, as you do, Marv, he said, you, know, you pop up every 400 odd games with your one goal. So oh, God, I mean, I think I've only scored 10 goals in my entire career, but I always say, look, they're, they're important goals most of the time. That's it. Space them out, make them important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Marv, you've played with some very, very good youngsters who've sort of come through to Luton. The people, well, people like Paul Dickoff, Matthew Upps, and Matty Taylor. Did you always see them to go on to have the careers that they had? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Matty Taylor definitely, one hundred percent. Um. He. I mean, he came onto the scene literally like overnight. Um, it was more towards the back end of, of, of my career. It's a, um, we had this other player who I think he might have gone to Burnley as well. Or we might have had a trial at Burnley as Luke as well, uh, called John Louis Valois. Like, I'm not, I think he, <coughs> yeah, we I think he was, he was on, he was on trial there, but he, he didn't get nothing and he ended up back at Luton. And yeah. I'm not being funny. I mean, this guy, French. He had the best debut I've ever, ever seen anyone's ever had. Literally, I think I can't think of who we're playing now at home against someone. And he scored a goal from about 25 yards. When everything he did on the day was just like ridiculous, like cross field balls, diagonals, taking the ball out of the air. He was like, he was like, he was like a Ginola. Literally, it was like ridiculously how good he was on his debut. It's the best debut I've ever seen. But then you're looking at him and you're thinking, how is he? I mean, how is he not playing at a high level? Why? I mean, why is someone? Knowing, like, he was at Burnley like, on trial, and I think it was at Leeds on trial. Why? I mean, how have they let him go? And then, as the like 
times come into winter sort of thing came into play and the grounds were a little bit more heavy and stuff and John Louis was went a little bit missing as as some <laughs> players do sort of thing and it, it, then the reason was why you know he you know he didn't fulfill obviously the the ability that he had so it used to be John Louis Valois left midfield Matthew Taylor like playing that left left back and so Joe Kinnear's manager at the time so probably about 20 minutes coming in the last 20 minutes of the game he'll say Jono Marv get warmed up so I'll come on get John Louis Valois off push Matty Taylor up to like left midfield and I'll go on at left back and and it's all like Unleash Taylor just to like just to cause the havoc. He had a, like a he had to shoot from him, from all angles, twenty five yards, thirty yards. I mean those I mean those goals he scored in the Premiership, where he's hitting a free kick or he hit a volley from literally the halfway, and that's just that's typical Taylor. That's that's, yeah, that's yeah. nothing outrageous. That's just like something he did like in training or in a game or attempted in a game. So yeah. it didn't surprise me when he was scoring those, like those goals, what people were saying, freakish goals, but they were like typical Matty's goals sort of thing, you know? Yeah. There were some belts as well, weren't there? Yeah. I'm going to say there's not many with sweet left foot, but I suppose two or three of them is Morton Gamps, Pedersen and John Arnerisa. I suppose he's on that yeah. same level. As soon as you yeah. hit it, it just says true, doesn't it? And oh, finds right. a roof there. Yeah, but like, again, like a great lad, a great um, energy as well. And um, like I said, um, he, he, I mean, he deserved everything he ach- achieved in the game. Mm. We, we had him at Burnley right at the end of his career, Matty Taylor. That's, and that's right. he didn't start many. He, he, Dyshie would usually bring him off the bench for the last 15 minutes for his set pieces because his delivery was just unreal. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the corners he was swinging in, he must have got four or five assists just from some appearances. Right. And, and, and Valois, we did have it, actually have him as a player. Um, he did? Yeah, it, it were after Luton, so he were like 33. At the time, under Steve Cox, we had no money at all. Right. And he were on a free, and we took him on, only for about two, maybe three months or something. And the only memory I have of him, we played Aston Villa in the Cup, and he actually scored, and he beat about three players and, and just ploughed it in off the crossbar. He had like long, bra- long black hair. That's it, that's it. No pace at all, but he was just jinky type of player. <laughs> but I can imagine he was probably a bit of a fan favourite. Um, oh, he was, yeah, he was, a, he was a, like, a, I mean, like the, the, like I said, the debut was probably the best debut I've ever seen anyone have. And, and again, um, a few of the players, I mean, like, it's, when he when 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 he when things were going great, like he, he like he could understand. Like when things were like you know he wasn't cracking back. Don't know me like that. No understand. No understand. Don't understand. It was like it, it was hilarious. Like he, he, oh you don't understand. Like but all of a sudden like it was a case of like you don't understand. Slow down. You talk too fast. Slow down. It, 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 it was funny. It's funny, but, but he was a good lad. You know, he was a good lad. Yeah. Um, just, just to flip it a bit, then, Marv, you played under under a few managers in your time. Who's who's been your favourite? Has there been a favourite, a standout one you've learned most from? Maybe. Um, I mean, Baby Pleat was the one who signed me um, originally, gave me um, my first professional contract, and he then left. And then Ray Artford, God bless him, he was the one who gave me my debut. And I had, I mean, I had, I had a lot of respect for Ray, and um, and he was just like a great top top coach, and just like gave the youngsters a chance. And then even when he left Luton and went on and done well with um, Blackburn and Kenny Douglas, and Kenny Douglas and stuff, so it just showed and proved what a great coach he was. And I enjoyed um, Lenny Lawrence, Lenny Lawrence time. I mean, he, he came into a lot of stick from the Luton fans throughout the, the time he was there. But I think it was more of a case of like what he had to work with. I mean, the club, was, again, was going through a transition and uh, there was a lot of young players coming to the team at, at, at any one time and it was difficult. But Lenny just had this way of being able to relate to the senior, pro- I think myself and Steve Davis, Mitchell Thomas. Well, and, I mean, he, he just had this way of looking after us and letting us manage the dressing room and get on with things. And so, yeah, I mean, those three managers are probably the ones that stand out one. Yeah, brilliant. So you dabbled in management yourself a little bit and as a coach, you oversaw the development of some really talented youngsters like Leon Barnett, Kevin Foley, Curtis Davis. Mm. 
all to have played in the Premier League. What was that like, sort of changing your roles into from a player to a coach? It, it, I mean, it was it was fantastic. It, it was a case where Joe Kinnear, manager at the time, just said to me, "Look, Jono, you're not getting any younger as you as 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 you, as, you, as we do. Would you like to come on the on the coaching side?" He said, "We'll we'll keep you um, registered as a player in the in your final year, and you'll work al- alongside John Moore and be his assistant and learn the ropes, sort of thing." Because he said um, the following year, John Moore's going to be retiring, and then you sort of like can take over in your own right there. So it was, it was quite an easy choice for me to, to, to decide really. And, and again, with the players, um, it was a case of, I think most of them had known of me and I just finished playing. So, I mean, I, I had respect from them coming on board in that respect. And then um, the likes of, like you just said, um, Curtis Davis, Kevin Foley, Liam Barnett. I mean, they were, I mean, they were great talents. And so, I mean, and went on to have great careers. And so, I, I enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it, and um, <clears throat> it came to the it came to an end when um, Kevin Blackwell decided to bring someone else in, and um, that that happens, you know. I mean, my I mean, I think I was I joined the club in eighty five, nineteen eighty five, and so it was two thousand and seven. Yeah, when I when I was, I was leaving, so a long time. Yeah, a long time. Was there any desire to, to maybe look for another club or were it just, that's it, done no, it so? No, that, that, that was it, George, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, just, I just thought, I mean, the time and obviously like, had come to, come to the end and, and I, I enjoyed coaching, but yeah. I'm sure, like, as you guys know, it's not what you know, it's who you know in this, in yeah, this yeah, industry. Yeah. So, therefore, yeah. it was a case where, I mean, I didn't really know anyone who was involved in, in any of the clubs. And so it was a case of like, then that was it now, really. Yeah. It's a shame. Just want to touch as well, Marv, before we do a, a little quiz we do with each of our guests. Before we get onto that, just ha- we have to mention it. You're no stranger to a podcast. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we just have to ask, obviously, you've had Sean Dyche on recently. On, on your, it, it's your best 11 pod, obviously, my best 11 pod. Yeah. Uh, how's it going? How are you finding it? We started it up ourselves in lockdown out of boredom. And uh, <laughs> Really? When, when, did, when did you start? When did you guys start? September what? last year. September, yeah. Oh, very recently, really. Um, yeah, so, so that was when we had our first episode out in September mm-hmm. as well. Sept- September the 17th, wow. believe it or not. Yeah, I mean, close to us, that, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. How, how, really? Did you, how did you come up with the idea? What was, what, was it just boredom or what? What was it? Really? Pretty much. I mean, we're all huge football fans. We all work for the same company. So we spend all our days at work doing what we're doing, just not with a professional football. <laughs> we, work, we work for BT, you know, that's that's what we do. So, um, yeah, and we still talk about football all day. Please don't sack me, BT. So uh, it's one of them things where, you know, we thought we're very opinionated people and thought, yeah, why not? Let's give it a go. And initially we were just talking about our opinions on football but funnily enough we realized quite quickly nobody cares what three idiots from chesterfield think about football so we started trying to get guests on and it went from there um and yeah we're, if you told if you told us i think you know five months ago whatever it is that we'd have had likes of yourself warren barton and some of the other yeah. incredible guests with that on it, 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 i'd have said you're insane but um <laughs> yeah so yeah, it just, it just it just snowballs, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, just, yeah. It's, just, it's similar with me because, I mean, the co-host Andrew McMillan, who's he has his other podcast. He's from Australia, mm. and he has it it's called "It's Not Called Soccer." His podcast, and he reached out to me and said, um, "Look, um, would you be willing to come onto the podcast to um, have an interview and a chat about your Luton career?" I'm a big. He's a big Luton fan. Um, grew up in Luton, but now lives in Australia. Married and stuff so I said yeah of course why not and so I went on to his podcast and then we got on really well we're just talking afterwards after we stopped recording and I just said to him oh you know obviously lockdown like similar to yourself you know I just said I find it strange that none of the lads all do their own podcast sort of Mm -hmm. thing and he goes well why don't you do one Marv I went, don't be so stupid. I said, I haven't got a Scooby-Doo. I said, look, that that sort of stuff is it's just like, I mean, if I'm going to do something, I want to do it properly, but I, I, I wouldn't ever do it on my own. Literally. Yeah, yeah. So he goes, I'll help you. And I went, really? He went, yeah, yeah, I'll help you. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go. And so um, 
he said, well, what do you want to, well, what do, how do you want to do it? What do you want to do? What do you want to talk about? I said, well, I, I mean, I can get like guests, I said, which is quite good. And I said, being an ex player myself, not being disrespectful. I said, I we want to keep it simple. I said, you want to, you don't want to complicate it. I said, I mean, I don't want players to come on and think like, is he going to ask me this? Is he going to try and dig yeah. this out sort of yeah, thing? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Even though I think like the lads who most of my play with, no, I wouldn't do that, but still you want to give them the, the security of like, they're going to be comfortable. So I said, yeah. well, why don't we just do like a, a my best 11? So they can come on. They know it's going to be about their 11. They yeah. can talk about their team and like go through the team, but not give like as the name, but we can sort of like guess like their name sort of thing at the same time. And, we can ask different questions and different stories in between and stuff like that. And we'll go from there and he goes, yeah, why don't we do that? And it's yeah. literally, like I said, September, we, we did, we did our first and it's just like snowboard, probably something like yourselves that uh, we know we've had some fantastic guests and Daishi was, I mean, Daishi for me, like, again, it's, it's, it's not like we, we talk every week. I mean, I probably spoke to Daishi probably three times since like he was yeah. on loan at, at um, Luton back yeah. back in the day from Bristol City. But like what I will say about Daishi is that he's so straight down the line and he's got, so, I got so much respect for the guy because literally there's players I've played with, many players I've played with who are, who are name, nameless, right? Who literally I've seen after I've stopped playing and I've seen him at different games. It's like, yeah, 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 I'll catch you in a minute, catch you in a minute, sort mm. of thing. And I, But Daishi is like, if I've seen him at a game, oh, how are you? Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Like, and, and we'll chat and have a chat. And then literally I've come over here in America since 2014 now. And every now and then I'll text him and say, well, great, good result. Well done, big man. And within uh, probably about six or seven times I've texted him. This is even before the podca podcast, mm. guys. It's literally within 60 seconds maybe a minute, yeah. no longer than that, he's come back to me, thanks, Marv, whatever. Oh, and no. that's for someone, for me, who's like, supposedly like, obviously he's got a high profile job, you know, and, yeah. and he's got he's got an excuse in my word, in my book, he's got an excuse for yeah. not getting back to me straight away. But like, he's always got back to me within literally 60 seconds, no longer than that. Thanks, Marv, thanks, Marv. So when I um, when we got the podcast, I, said, I reached out to him, he said, yeah, not a problem, Marvel. It might be a little bit awkward because obviously games wise or whatever, but just just try and give me some dates and and we'll get it sorted. And and to his word, he did. You know, fantastic. It does seem very class. There was that interview, weren't there, the other day where uh, it was just oh, cool. looky li like his. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Really. Just it was yeah. like, oh, other other uh, presenter, whatever's asked a different question. Like, oh, you have to bore it up now, don't you? <laughs> He is. Yeah. He is absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's spot on. He's, he's he's brilliant. I mean, and that's what we used to do. Like, I mean, everyone. I mean, loads of teams. Oh, look, look, look. There's stones over there. Like, he looks like stones over there, and it, it's <laughs> it's just hilarious. I mean, I when he when he was say, talking about it, I was crying with laughter because that's what you used to do of a night in a hotel, having dinner, whatever, and and you and you literally wake sometimes until someone's just about to eat something and go, well, isn't 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 that that. Um, Tom Hanks and they look up and he said like a they spit their food out because it's it's a spitting image it's just brilliant <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant yeah I love so, that if it needed to say as well we'll make, it? we'll make sure it's in our description everything everyone make sure you go check out My Best 11 pod run by Marvin himself so get on it fantastic watch with Sean Dyche we'll look forward to many more guests you, you've got coming up yeah Graham Alexander as well I need to watch that yeah, yeah Greg, Greg, Greg was on. I played with Gretchen at Luton. He, again, I mean, it was unfortunate because um, it literally was a week after he just left Salford. Oh, and yeah. so, um, again, fair play to him. I mean, I, I said to him, look, yeah. Greg, if you want to, like, like, no, 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 we'll, 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 we'll do it. We'll do it, Marv, still. Again, so, I mean, I suppose, because obviously we weren't going to really talk about Salford. I suppose he knew at the yeah. end of the day it was about yeah. my best 11. But, I mean, it, it, again, it could be, it could have been easily is an excuse for him to say, well, look, I mean, yeah. I just wanted this, some downtime for now, but no, I mean, everyone's been fantastic. I mean, everyone's been great. Um, who I've, I mean, who I've tried to get, trying to get on. I mean, yeah. so it's been great. We, we've, we've found that as well. We sort of <laughs> found very quickly that if someone's willing to come on and have a chat and have a laugh with us, then they're not going to be a dickhead. <laughs> no, I, I, but that's the thing. I mean, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's so true. I, 
Yeah. I, I just feel that. I mean, if, I mean, if someone turns around and says to me a lot, Marv, I mean, would you come on to the podcast? Why would you say no? You know, yeah. why, I, mean, I just don't understand. If you, I think if you haven't got the time, yeah. then that's fine. I get that. And obviously you're, you're, you're struggling wise, but I mean, they've, they've, they've shown an interest in you. Then like, they want to talk to, talk to you about like your career or whatever it may be. They're like, they have shown an interest. Why would you say no? I don't, I don't know. There's not that, that you're going to go on there. It's a case of you saying that like, you want to brag and about this, but no. it's all about helping each other. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, and especially from, from that point of view, like I thought to myself, I mean, I've been on now your guys and then I've been on one other podcast and I, it's a case of look, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go on anyone's to like, just to like, just to, to help them to like, to, to drop numbers or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a case of helping each other in this day and age, do you know what I mean? Especially like what, what, what we're going through now with the pandemic and stuff. Yeah. Well, we, appreciate and we do appreciate it. And no, it's like my pleasure. Every single guest we've had on every single Mick, before you step in with, there, there is one. Why is it? Why who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Who's he? Not, not liked. I won't, What's say, wrong? I won't say the name. In my opinion, every guest has been fantastic. Nick might disagree with one. I'll tell. We'll tell you after we stop recording. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Josh is absolutely right. If you're willing to come on and talk to us three, who, like I've said, work for BT, then you're clearly a decent person at the end of the day. And, and and we've never tried to stitch anyone up. We let them do that themselves if they want when they're talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah, the exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> listen, trust thing. a lot of players, listen, trust me, a lot of players can do that doing themselves. I mean, yeah. easily, easily. Yeah, I've had I've had to edit a few to preserve a few uh preserve a few reputations. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. It's the best thing to do. We would never put something out that could harm someone. No. Right. Um so it, it if I see something that I think I wouldn't have said that. I'll put it for their benefit. You know? Right. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think I've said anything a bit until. <laughs> no, no. I'd, I'd, no. I'd, I'd, listen, I, guys. I'd say, listen, listen. I say, run with it. I don't care because if I've said it about someone, right, that means that most people who know me knows me that I'm a I'm a decent enough guy. So for Marv to say something bad about him, that must be true. That's how people <laughs> listen. That's why I said run with it. I'll run with it. I've done interviews like with different people, and they've said, "Oh, I'll send it across to you for you to just to have a look to read." For it. No, it's fine. I said, "Listen, just go with it." They go, "Yeah, but like I might." I said, "No, it's fine. If I said something about someone, trust me, yeah. I will live with that and I'll own that because obviously I mean that." Yeah, like, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm an honest way. person. No, yours is edit free, Marv. You've been nothing but a gem. <laughs> hear that for sure, mate. <laughs> Right. Okay. As Luke alluded to, we just do a little um, a little five question quiz. So we call it the the Tommy Lee profile quiz. Tommy was the first to get five out of five. Former Chester really? goalkeeper. Yeah. Oh uh, gosh, I, think, I got I think no you've chance got a good, then. No, I think you've got a good shot here, Marv. I, I'm, I'm okay. backing you. Yeah, yeah but I, I, I listened. I listened to you. I see again. I, do, I like to do my research. I listened to, to your last podcast. I think was it with. Um, Paul Devlin was it? And yeah. then, like the questions are hard. I'm thinking if I get those questions, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking. Shh. Right. Anyway, I listen. I'll go with it. I'll try. Up his career. I think your questions are all right. I, I really do. You <laughs> say that, Josh, but trust me, we'll see then. We'll see. <laughs> okay, we'll go. Number one. Um, right. So you made an incredible 440 appearances for Luton Town. How many of those were in the league? And I've, I've given you a choice of three. Um, so it's three five three, three six three, or three seven three. Three seven three. I'm guessing. Correct. Yes. Three, <laughs> three, <laughs> seven, three. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to get zero. I've got. I've got. I'm on the board. I didn't want to get zero. <laughs> Has anyone got any zero? Has We've had a one. I don't think we had a zero. Nah, Steve Baines. Steve Baines. You might remember him. Ex ex defender for Chesterfield and multiple other teams. Yeah. Um, he got one. Did and he? then he, and he was also then a referee. I don't even think he got one. I think I gave it him out of sympathy. Really. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh dear. Poor Steve. Okay. Uh, right, question two. Um, so from my research, I could only yeah. find one red card in your career. I don't know if there was more, but this the one I'm talking about was a league game in 1998. Who was it against? Tottenham? No, Colchester in 1998. <coughs> really? 2-0 yeah. win, 29th of August, 1998, Colchester. Oh yes, I did, yes, I did get sent off, but I thought I got, you know what, I thought I got sent off at home against Tottenham in, um, 
in the league game, and it's a time when the reason I remember it, Paul Stewart. Remember Paul Stewart, the centre forward. Yeah. Yeah. So he was playing up up front, and uh, the ball like was like he was also like spun off me, and the ball was going over my head literally, and I just jumped up and scored it like a basketball player. I just thought, fuck, but I'm, I, you know, you're not going through. And the rest had come across the thing down, Fred Guard. And like, at the end of the day, I knew I was going to go, but yeah. I thought he's going to go through and score. But I think we ended up drawing, tying the game. So, um, yeah, yeah I remember that. that but I, that's, the, that's the only one I remember. But then now, Josh, you do. Yeah, the the yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, so, number three, uh, how many goals did you score for Luton in all competitions? Is it seven? Nine or ten? Ten. Yes, it is ten. You mentioned it earlier. I thought that's in the quiz. <laughs> so I knew you weren't going to get zero. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, next one. I've, I've gone easy on you, Imav. I've given you another multiple choice here. Have um, so number four. How many managers did you have in your looting Ooh. career? Is it seven, eight, or nine? Eight. I'm guessing. It's nine. I can list them if you want. You might, you might tell me one of them. Josh, you've got to list them now. Come on. <laughs> I've got, uh, I'm going to listen carefully. <laughs> Ray Arford, uh, Terry Mancini, Jimmy Ryan, David Pleat, Terry Westley, Lenny Lawrence, Ricky Hill, Lil F Ficilio, yeah, but you and, know, yeah, and Joe Kinnear. Yeah, that's right, nine. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Well done, well done. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Josh, go on then, let's move on. Come on. Um, and last one, uh, who was your last Luton Town goal against? Oh, that's easy. Hartlepool. It was. 2-2 two -two yeah. draw, December 2001. That's my favourite That's my favorite of a goal as well. Favourite of a goal, because it's, it's literally, uh, we were 2-1 down and um, I came on again. Like, the, like I said, the, the sub, like John Louis, off you get, mate. Yeah. Right? And then push tails up. I came on and it literally was probably about seven man, like starting from the right back, seven man move. And ended up with me like locking the ball into the bottom corner, um, just from outside the box. Yeah, yeah. That but was what's that feeling like, Marv, scoring a goal? Because it's what I always dreamed of being a footballer. And I just, I mean, it must be honest, John, like I used to like, I used to think I was I, I was better than our strikers. I really did. I literally, I knew right I could finish. That's one thing about me. I knew I could finish. Give me a chance, and I could finish nine times out of ten. And literally, it's 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 a great feeling. I mean, like, the, the goal, like I said, against Hartlepool was. I mean, I'm left footed. It's literally it's it's like the ball. I play the ball like into the box, and I've carried on running. And as the ball's come back to me, it's like on my right foot. And I've just like passed it into yeah. the net, bottom corner sort of thing, and and it's. And it just felt natural, that uh, instinctive for me to do that sort of thing. Whereas, like, I've seen some like of our strikers, and they'll be snatching up things, blasting things. Like, oh, what are you doing? Be calm. Like, you've not seen my finish. Be, be calm. Like, Rest geez. the ball. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> And even and even like I mean the, the Ipswich goal, literally the last minute. I mean, some people would have panicked. They said like, but again, I was just like, bang, get on target, hit the target. I scored another goal in the FA Cup against Bolton in the last minute. Again, there's just like a scramble in the box, and I had to do like some quick feet to, to, to maneuver the ball, like because the keeper's coming out with his hands and stuff right in the six-yard box. And again, I've slotted it there. So, I mean, just seems to be. I mean, I'd, I'd I'd call myself a natural finisher because I mean even in five aside in in training I'd be like playing as a playing as a striker yeah. I'd be like saying look at the end of the day even in games I've mentioned to to, to the opposing attacker like I mean I could sometimes nip in front of them and get the ball and do a little maze because I used to love dribbling love dribbling <laughs> yeah. and I used to go out the field and then like it'll, I'll come back and I'll go. Aren't you meant to be the attacker? Are you, are, 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 am I not meant to be marking you? And just to get into his head, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. So, so it was, it, it, I enjoyed it. It was great. You, you were put in the wrong position, Marvis. You, you could have been England's like number nine for the last 15 years. Oh, it, it, you know what, Luke? As a, I, I mean, I say that now. I was a little bit ahead of my time, you know, this playing out from the back and all that. I was I was doing all that from, yeah. from as soon as I mean, came into Luton sort of thing. And so, no, I mean, I, I would definitely enjoy playing now 100%. 100%. I don't want to be the one to say it. Sorry? Sorry, go on, Josh. 
No, I say be- pitches would be a bit better now, I imagine, as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, they would. They would, most definitely. It makes it easier, doesn't it? It does, 100%, much easier on, on these on these fields that they're playing now. I mean, mind you, I mean, I think back when I was playing, I mean, it was a case where I remember as a schoolboy, now as a schoolboy, I'm, I'm still like um, at school, I came mm. over to Luton and play in a, played in a reserve game, like as a schoolboy. Whereas now, if you look at you know, these, these academies, they've got under 23s, some of these players are not even nowhere near the first team by the age of 21 22 i don't know yeah. i don't know how they survive I, I, could, I just wouldn't be able to be able to do that i'd be too like hungry to play in the first team i want to leave that which some of them do i want to leave that club and go and play maybe in division three division four whatever in a yeah. proper team yeah. and then work my way back up sort of thing yeah absolutely no, I was going to say I didn't want to be the one to say it, but goals to game ratio tells me otherwise, Marv, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, but listen, I was a defender. I was supposed to stop goals, not score goals. Huh? Yeah, no, um, and, uh, yeah. And what a defender you were, Marv, and what a brilliant guest you've been been for oh, us. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Um, wish you all the best with the pod. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up with you soon. Guys, no, thank you. I've enjoyed it. I know it's been great chatting to you and then like I said, um, hopefully, like like I said, I mean, many more guests you can get have on. I mean, ask, just I mean, just keep asking. I mean, at the end of the day, the worst they can say is no, you know. Oh, and no. then, uh, and then, and then we can, then you can tell me they said no, no. And we can like shame on Twitter, you boring <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll get I to your message, and then if you can reply, you can text him. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Cheers, Bob. Thank you, Thanks, guys. Cheers, Bye. Bye.